Today we'll talk about the deviation of light in a prism. So let's say that we have a piece of paper and we have a glass prism on that piece of paper. Like that. So uh, light passes from that end, it falls on the prism and then it deviates like that from the other end. So we are going to trace the path of light for something. So we are doing this because we need to know the angle of the prism, that angle. We need to know the measurement of that angle. We need to know the angle of deviation of light. So if we um, extend the incident ray and the emergent ray, there is an angle between them. This is called the angle of deviation to see how much the light has deviated. We will just talk about that. And we also need to know the refractive index of the glass of the prism. So we are going to draw the, the base of the prism with the light passing through it. So the black triangle, this is the base of the prism, let's call it uh, X, Y, Z. This is a triangle. And this is the path of light. So this is the incident ray, and this is the immersion ray, and this is the light passing through the base of the prism. So, uh, first of all, we need to know that we refer to the angle of incidence by phi and the angle of refraction by theta. <clears throat> so if a light falls on a normal surface, and this is the normal to the surface, makes a right angle with the surface, and the light fell like that, then it refracted like that, this is the angle of incidence, and this is the angle of refraction. So let's see this in the prism. Now we will deal with this face of the prism. So light fell like that. This is the angle with the normal. So accordingly this is phi and this is theta. Now with the other side of the prism, light fell like that, then it refracted. So the angle with the normal will be that angle. So this is phi and this is theta. Now these angles are different, so we need to number them because the phi here is not the same as that phi and theta here is not the same as that theta. So this will be phi 1, theta 1, phi 2, theta 2. Okay, so first we need to know the value of A, which is this angle here. Then we need to know the angle of deviation, which is that angle here, that angle. And then we need to know the refractive index of the glass of the prism. So first of all, Let's name this angle E. This angle is the angle between extending the two normals to the two sides of the prism. Now, in the triangle, this triangle, let's say triangle A, B, E. In this triangle, 180 degrees equals E plus theta 1 plus phi 2. Okay. And in the quadrilateral x, a, e, b, uh, of course the total sum of the angles is 360 degrees. But we can notice that these two angles are actually right angles because they are the angles that the normal make to the surface. So they are 
accordingly 90 degrees each. So this means that their sum is 180 degrees. And as the total sum of angles of the quadrilateral is 360, this means that A plus E equals 180 degrees. So 180 degrees equals E plus A. From these two relations, accordingly, we can easily conclude that the value of A equals theta 1 plus 5, 2. So when we trace the path of light through the prism on the paper and we measure theta 1 and phi 2 and we sum them together, we can finally know the value of the angle of the prism. So this is our first deduction. Now to the next thing that we need to know, the angle of deviation. Um, this angle. So let's name this little triangle in here, triangle DAB. And this triangle, if we drew it on a larger scale, this is alpha, and this is A, this is B, this is D. So alpha here is an external angle, and the measure of alpha equals the measure of this angle plus this angle. So let's see in the triangle. How can we get the measure of this angle and this angle? Well, that um, DAE angle, that one, has a measurement just equal to phi 1 because they are vertically opposite angles. Accordingly, the measurement of that angle, DAB, is just phi 1 minus theta 1. It's just the same case over there because the measurement of that angle, DBE, is just equal to theta 2 because they are vertically opposite angles. So the measurement of that small angle over here is theta 2 minus phi 2. So, as we have just said, now we've got the measurement of the two angles that we need and easily we can get um, phi 1 or uh, we can get alpha because alpha equals the summation of these two angles. So, accordingly, alpha equals phi 1, negative theta 1, plus theta 2, negative phi 2. And here we have A equals theta 1 uh, plus phi 2. Now all we need to do is just we flip the signs. So we take a common negative sign and we will get negative phi 1, positive theta 1, negative um, theta 2, and positive phi 2. So here we have the theta 1, the positive theta 1, and the positive phi 2. So these are A. Accordingly, alpha equals negative, and then a bracket, negative phi 1, negative theta 2, uh, plus A. Again, we introduce the negative sign after we um, substitute it with A. So finally, alpha equals um, phi 1, positive theta 2, negative A. So this is the value of the angle of deviation. So first, we need to know the angle of the prism. After we know the angle of the prism, we can measure phi 1 and theta 2, and then subtract A from the summation of the two angles, then we can get the value of the angle of deviation of the prism. So this is our thing. 
we need to deduce. It's okay. Now the refractive index. Before talking about the refractive index, well, in order to know the refractive index, we need to reach to the state of um, minimum angle of deviation, which is called alpha zero. So here we know we need to know a graph. This is a parabola, and let's say this is the minimum angle of deviation, and this is the angle of deviation. This is phi zero, and, and this is phi one, let's say. Now, as the angle of incidence increases, the angle of deviation decreases, as we can see, with the curve, till it reaches its minimum, which is called the minimum angle of deviation. Then it tends to increase again. So, at that minimum angle of deviation, this is the case. If we say that this is the base of the prism, and the light follows like this, well, the shape of the path of light tends to be symmetrical. I mean, this half just looks like that half. Accordingly, the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction at that side just equals the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction at that side. So, theta 1 equals phi 2 and phi 1 equals theta 2. Now, we substitute with these values in these relations. So, we can say that phi 1 equals theta 1 equals phi 0. And theta 1 equals phi 2, this is 2, sorry. So, theta 1 equals phi 2 equals theta 0. Now, we substitute these values in the relations that we deduced. So, A will equal 2 phi 0, or 2 theta 0, and alpha will equal 2 phi 0 negative a. From this we can get the value of theta 0 and phi 0, so theta 0 will equal a over 2 and phi 0 will equal alpha negative a or alpha positive a okay over 2 and as we need to know the refractive index of the material of the glass of the prism definitely we know that n equals sine the angle of incidence over sine the angle of refraction so n of the glass of the prism accordingly will equal sine a over 2 over sine alpha plus a over 2 so this is how to get the refractive index of the glass of the prism and that's it for today. I hope it was clear for you. Until the next time, I thank you for watching and see you.